Hey there, Tulaholics. Today we're going to go over how to properly laminate a beam. You see a lot of mistakes that people make doing these, even though it seems pretty simple. It should be done properly, so I'm uh, making this little video to show you how to do it. First step is mark your crowns and set your pieces so that crowns are faced in the same direction. And then you gotta straighten your boards. It's easily a lot easier to do with the helper. You can see my son here is pulling the board to straighten it out. If you put one nail and alternate sides every I don't know three or four feet, it makes it a little bit easier push. And then here you can see you can shoot a couple of toenails, and it'll help uh, pull a board straight when it's too hard to pull by hand. And it didn't quite pull it over, so now I got two toenails shot into the corner there right in the same spot and I can smack them with the hammer and it'll pull the board over. Now I got my boards pulled straight and tacked together I can nail them all the way together. Normally what I would do is tack the other side opposite where I put a tack, tacked all my nails in first and then flip the boards and nail the other side first. This would uh, just helps get rid of some of the sag but this is only a 12 foot long beam and I don't really have a whole lot of sag so I'm just going to go ahead and nail it. The rule of thumb when you're using regular dimensional lumber here is for every two inches of board width you want one nail. So I have two by 12s here that means I run six nails per row and I'm going to space my rows out every eight to ten inches. Now, these are general rule of thumb for building a beam and in the area that I live in, so you should check your local building code, and if your engineer says you should do something different, then that's what you should do. Now, the nails I'm using here are three and a quarter inch galvanized ring shanks. They're galvanized because uh, we're working outdoors here, we've got pressure treated lumber, we're building a deck. The three and a quarter inch nails go through exactly three inches of material when fired at 30 degrees on from the 30 degree framing gun and that's why thir framing guns are set at 30 degrees. I will note that galvanized nails hold much stronger than brights do and ring shanks also hold stronger than brights do and you can see that the Milwaukee framing gun uh, shoots really 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 well. Now we're about ready to flip this thing over and nail the other side. We've got a couple of uh, little under driven nails here that uh, Logan's gonna smack down for me and those are more user error than uh, the nail gun not driving enough. Now that we got it flipped over we're gonna nail the same number of nails, the same spacing and we want our nails to cross directions and to make like a X shape through the two plies of the beam that really locks it together. An easy way to do that is to keep your beam on the same side of your body and always start at the same end of your beam and go in the same direction when you're nailing and that will automatically cross your nails and lock your beam together. One mistake that I see a lot of people do is that they don't think that you need to nail both sides of the two plies of a beam together. They nail from the one side and then they nail their third ply onto the unnailed side. But you have to nail both directions on your first two plies of a beam always. I'm shooting the nails in. It's going pretty quick. Uh, this, is, uh, this whole video is real time by the way. I haven't sped it up. When you're first starting to nail your beam together, you'll have to find you generally have to get your gun dialed in a little bit for the depth that it's driving the nails. You want to really make sure that uh, you're not shooting the nails through the other side. So that means getting used to shooting at the right angle, having your drive depth set just right on your gun, and then you get everything nice and clean and you don't get a pokey stabby side of your beam that you've got to lift into place. 
Alright, we're just finishing up the side of the beam and you're going to want to go over it again with the hammer. Just knock down any underdriven nails or any little pokey bits that shot through and we can lay, we're ready to lay on our next ply of the beam. These are the technical carpentry terms. If you really want to piss off car a carpenter that has to use the right word for everything, <laughs> then, um, you know that, that, that thing that I was calling a speed square? Yeah. Call it a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's called a speed square. It'll make them, it'll make, it'll, in some people it makes them really mad. <laughs> it like drives them completely fucking bonkers. <laughs> Well, now that I've got my next ply lined up on top and my crown set in the same direction, I'm going to tack it into place the same as I did before with the other two. And we're going to straighten the board with the assistance of a helper on the end of the board. It's a lot easier to do this with two people with a helper, but you can pull it over with, uh, you can pull your board straight with clamps or nails or whatever else uh, methods that you need to. One thing that I always like to do when I'm laminating a beam together is when I mark my crown on my boards, I mark the crown on the both, uh, both sides of the board because if I don't, I always end up with uh, the side that I mark the fucking crown on, I covered it up with another board or it's uh, sandwiched in between the two boards and then I can't see where my crown is and you want to put your crown going up, so uh, you want it all over the place, everywhere, so you can avoid that. And I'm already starting it, filling up the third ply with nails. As you can see, I'm running the same direction again with the beam on the same side of my body. I'm spacing my nails the same six nails across. 8 to 10 inches between rows of nails and it really doesn't take a whole lot of time when you're smashing it, uh, shooting them in with a nail gun and uh, this is takes quite a bit of, of work to do, nail a beam together if you're using hand bangers though. I've got my helper trained now so he's following along me and is smacking in any underdriven nails. It's also a good idea to uh, just uh, Kind of try and do something to look busy when you're on a job site, whether you're doing something that's actually useful or not. And we're just about done, like completely building this beam. Uh, it's taken us about eight minutes. We I haven't sped anything up, I haven't cut anything out, and we've got a three ply, two by twelve, twelve foot being built for this deck that I'm building. Leave any questions in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and click the notification bell. And if you think I'm an idiot and uh, you think I'm doing something wrong or stupid or think I'm super duper 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 sexy, then say that in the comments too. Hope you all have a great day and I uh, hope this helps people build beams properly from now on. Thanks for watching.